Now this diagram represents the timeline of serologic markers in a patient who does not clear the infection and instead goes from acute to a chronic infection. Many step one resources don't illustrate these high yield points as they relate to chronically infected patients. So pay close attention to this diagram. Just like in the patients who do recover, the acute phase is very similar. We have the surface antigen, then the E antigen presents next, and then the antibodies against the core, starting with the IgM. Now focusing on the red line, which depicts the surface antigen, you notice at the six month mark, it doesn't go down. It's still present, it just continues. And this really defines the chronic infection. And you can also see that there's no antibodies formed against the surface. This makes sense because antibodies against the surface indicate immunity. And if the patient has a chronic infection, they're obviously not immune. Now going to look at the E antigen line, the yellow line, we notice that it didn't dip down at the five to six month mark as it did in the last diagram, which you can see right here. Instead, it continues for a while into the chronic phase and it doesn't dip down until well into this phase, at which point, the patient develops antibodies against the E antigen. This makes sense because the patient was unable to clear the infection as normal. So the virus continues replicating longer than expected. And remember, the E antigen indicates high viral replication. Thankfully, in these chronic patients, when they develop these antibodies against the E antigen, they have low transmissibility or low infectivity and they're not as contagious. Now let's dive into the image mnemonic to help you memorize all of the important details of hepatitis B. This scene will take place in a quaint village near some cows that are being attacked by giant bees. These cows have big liver-shaped spots on them, helping you think of the liver in hepatitis. The bees represent the B in hepatitis B. Bringing these ideas together will help you think of hepatitis B. Naturally, big bees have big beehives, which you can see here. This team of marksmen have spotted this big beehive. Notice those pads on the hips of those marksmen? They like to protect their hips because they found the giant bees find it easiest to place their stinger in this hip area where the men can't defend easily with their hands. Anyways, hip pads sounds like hepatinovirus, which is the family to which hepatitis B belongs. These marksmen use bows and arrows to protect their village. The beehive nest symbolizes hepatitis B. These gems on the surface of the hive represent surface antigens, and the arrows are the recurring symbol for antibodies. The fact that these arrows are on the surface of the beehive nest should help you remember that they represent hepatitis B surface antibodies, or antibodies against the surface antigen. Finally, you can see how all the arrows on the bottom of the beehive here are preventing the big beehive from attaching to the ground, indicating that the arrows have prevented infection. 